Passwords are important. My name is Travis, and this is DevTips. Recently, we've been looking at animation on the web, and in the last two videos, we looked at the mechanics of CSS animations and how to get them working in your browser. And we spent a lot of time talking about how to get these things done. And, and as I was you know, making the next video to learn how to code specific components for the web, I realized we haven't talked about the why yet. So before we go into learning more about the specific components that I think are a good idea to animate, I wanna talk with you about why you should be animating certain things and why you should not be animating other things. So consider this an education in user experience for you coding nerds. And of course, this is not gonna be an exhaustive list, but we can look at those moments and see when animation is adding to the user experience. So I have a list here of six things. Let's go down the list. We have orientation, functional change, a new element is on the page, highlighting something to bring the user's attention to it, visual feedback, letting the user know that they're doing the right thing, and system status, letting them know that you know something's working. So let's just scroll through these. I have a few examples of these, of an animation working in the context of these moments, right? Now, keep in mind that the execution of the animation that I'm gonna show here is not, of course, the only time or the only way that we can bring these moments about. Uh, I'm just giving you one example that will let you understand how this principle, how this moment works. And again, uh, all of these this code is, is live and available for you to check out on CodePin. So we're not gonna be doing any code right now today, but all the code that I wrote last night to get these six examples working is available for you to like, you know, you can go over here to editor view and, and check out all this, all the, the code that I wrote. It, it's just too much to go over in this one video, but dissect it, dive in. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty fun. So let's go back to full page. Where was I? Okay. First one, first principle, first moment is orientation. Okay. Now this moment, this idea, this principle will try to answer the question. Each of these moments I paired with a question to help us like understand what problem we're trying to solve with this animation, right? So this question is, where am I now? And in this example here, I have someone filling out a form. That's my new name, <laughs> Toravis. And when they click this button, okay, what's gonna happen and how do we show, uh, show that in, in like a subliminal orientative way to the user? So I click this button and I can see that the page I was in got taken away and over, overridden by a new page. And so we're giving the user information about what they're going through right now. We're saying that there's gonna be steps, like maybe the second page also has a form like a credit card number and the next one would be like email address or whatever. Um, when we do this animation, we're saying we've got that, here's the next thing. And there's a lot of subtlety that we're communicating by doing this animation. We're saying that, uh, okay, we, we understand your, your input, here's the next step. We're saying that this is a sequence. We're saying that you're doing good, like notice how the, the color changed a little bit um, it's, it's more um, desaturated right here. We're saying that these are part of a series, right? There's a lot of things that are being communicated with this animation. Now, orientation is a principle. And I really want to kind of nail down the idea that all of these executions that I'm going to be showing you on this, in this video are not the only expression of the principle. Right, so here's orientation. How, how else could you use the idea of animating orientation to help people know what they're doing? I'm thinking of like, um, you know, if you click on a calendar icon and it expands to have an actual calendar, like it, it, it you, you can zoom in, uh, you can open, unfold, you can, you can orientate people. Like let's say, you click on a link and then you see the page slide out and a new page slide in. This is where modals happen. Animation lets you know that you traveled somewhere, that the UI is new because of something that you did and it lets you know where you are now in relation to where you came from, okay? That's the important thing. 
when a user goes to a new experience, a new view, a new page, and they don't feel confident in where they are, that means they don't, they're not sure where they are in related relation to where they came from. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of this going on inside there, but try to tap into that. And we can use animation to orient people to where they are in relation to where they were. Okay, so let's scroll down. I think I've talked about orientation enough. Functional change. There's a really interesting pattern in UX where the thing that we clicked on after we clicked on it, it has a different function. The button means something else, okay? So this, this animation answers the question, what does this element do now? So here we have just a, like a basic toggle. You've seen these a million times. But when I click it, notice that this button animates and we see that it has a change. If I click this button again, it has a completely opposite effect of what it did the first time I clicked it, right? It's a toggle, on or off. It's the same UI element, but it can do different things depending on what state it's in. And this animation here will help me to know um, what state it's in. So let me think, let me throw out a few other like executions of this principle. Um, we have the, you know, the hamburger menu, and if you click on it, it turns into an X. That's the same button, the same area, the same, the same, you know, icon to click has changed states. And if it, if it just quickly turns into from an X into a three button, a, th a three, what is that called, a hamburger? Then maybe it's not as clear as if you see it animate or something. Maybe there's like a mute to a volume button. Um, different things where that same area, if I clicked it twice, it would have two different two different functions. This is what I'm talking about when I'm saying functional change and animation can help make that more clear, okay? That this button means something else now. And answers the question, what does it do now? Let's move on. A new element, uh, this answers the question, what should I be looking at? When we introduce a new element to the page, then there's, uh, that's a, it's a really hard thing because we're trying to help the user to understand that something new is on the page and to help them understand why it's there, okay? So I have a mock layout here. It looks like a wireframe or something. And when I hit this trigger button, we're gonna, we're gonna um, animate in a, like an alert, right? It pushes the information down. Um, but notice the way it doesn't just like pop in and just like disorient where I was reading here and now it's gone, right? It's pushing it down, it's animating it down to let me know that something new happened here. And I can look at this new thing and say, okay, this came from where, I know where, because I saw it come, and what does it want? And now I can read it and understand what its relation is to the content that it's you know, uh, being introduced to. So new elements are a really good opportunity to use animation to make it clear to the user what this thing is, why it's here, and is it a temporary item like a modal or a um, a new interface, but uh, a new interface element, um, a, a alert message? Maybe it's a, a success, like a congratulations, your purchase went through. Uh, maybe it's you know, could be a lot of things. Anytime you add a new element to the page. Uh, it's an option to animate in. And I'm talking about like maybe it's a drop down menu. You animate, animate the, the menu that comes down. Maybe it's a, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's you're, you're adding, you know, a friend, like, you know, you, you just followed somebody and so you're adding them to the list of followers or something. There's a lot of opportunities where we can add elements to the, uh, the page. And to do so with an animation, helps people to understand what was added, like what changed, and why. You use a lot, you can communicate very subtly with animation. You can even tell people why with animation. And the next one is highlight. Highlight answers the question, what is important on this page? And when I was thinking of highlight, uh, I was thinking of like a, maybe like it's like a UX demo, you know, like this is maybe we're, um, have like a, a marketing page for our application and you have this like little beacon or this little like bing of this feature and we and you hover hover over it maybe it like talks about that feature or something or you know but like these little animations these little pulsing here bring our attention to that spot now this is this is 
a really, really powerful thing. Motion, like motion, okay, let's just take a moment here and respect motion because in terms of UX hierarchy, we have information levels, right? You know, like let's say our headline is at the top and then we have a kicker and then a subhead and a body line and, and like a citation maybe. All of these things have a built-in structure that give us information. When we're trying to scan a news article, we know what to look for, right? Well, animation really, it goes above almost everything, every time when we're talking about the hierarchy of a page. And so if you really want to draw attention to an element, especially if it's um, in, a, in a very crowded page, you know, like a very busy, noisy page, sometimes it's unavoidable. But one way to stand out above the crowd, stand out, is to use animation. And right here I'm showing you like a little beacon that's popping, but it could be a million other things, right? Maybe, you know, maybe it's something that's dropping out of the sky. Maybe it's something that's, you know, changing, just changing colors, or maybe a million things. Just I'm talking about animation as the principle. To, to answer the question, what is important here? As the user, what should I be looking at? Animation is a great way to do that. The last, next one, visual feedback. This is one of my favorites on this example because I was like, by the time I coded this yesterday, it was like three in the morning. I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> anyway, visual feedback answers the question, is this layout understanding what I'm telling it to do? As a user, I'm giving it information. I'm telling it that I, you know, like I wanna navigate to another page or in this case, I wanna send this message or this email, right? So let me click the send the email button and tell me if this animation makes you feel that the email system understood what I was trying to tell it. Okay, click. See how it just kind of flew up? This is something I've seen on Mac OS X in their mail. I don't use their mail, but I've seen this and I really liked it. And also had this like, <laughs> kind of like noise. Uh, audio is another, another powerful thing. But anyway, so in, in this animation, you can see like it has a bounce and then jumps up. Like we have this idea that we're sending the email, we're shoving it up into the cloud, we're putting it out on the internet. And this is really great visual feedback because my intent as the user is to send this email out. And if the animation replicates or, or, or represents, that's the idea, that's the word. If, if the animation represents that idea with motion, it's all the better, right? So I'm gonna send this email. It's gone. Internet. <laughs> All right, we have one more. This is called system status. This one is actually really important. Let's say that we're building an interface and the, you know, the back end has to process some information. Like maybe we're pulling a report from a database. Maybe we're sending, uh, sending uh, a, a submit of a form. Maybe we're, um, what's the other one? I don't know, you know, like processing the credit card or something. We need to let the user know that we're not blocked, that we're not stumbling, we're not, we're not throwing errors, but we're thinking and we're processing and it's working, this is intended, right? So it, I have here just an example of run of the mill progress bar, but you can see that this progress bar has different speeds. It kind of kind of stops right there and jumps to here and slows back down to normal and, and so forth. This animation is specifically the way that it kind of jerks around. If it was one linear growth, like that would be okay, but I would, I would know that you know, nothing is connected there to what's actually happening. But because it has this kind of like jerky motion, it tricks me. It makes me feel that like, oh, something's happening. I, there's this one, <laughs> this one time aside here, but uh, at a job that I was doing, I did a similar type of bar and I programmed the animation wrong where like it actually went up and then went back and then went forward. And then um, one of the engineers who was implementing my code was like, I really like it. It makes me think that like something went wrong and then it tells me something went right. It was like a roller coaster of emotion. <laughs> But the point is that animation connects to us on an emotional level. 
And you could say, sure, it's just a system status, it's just a progress bar. But the point is that we all have these intimate relationships with progress bars. And, you know, what's, what's more effective, a spinner or a progress bar? And why? They all tell a story. And this is just, this is just a progress bar, but the idea of a system status, it could be any type, it could be any message processing, right? And there's like the little ball is jumping. Oh, here's one. Um, the Google... Like when you do a voice command and like the, the, the balls jump like this and then when you talk they, they grow like this. Those are system status animations and they're also visual feedbacks. Like they all, you know, they, nothing is just exclusively one. But these things work together and these principles combine together to make a really great experience for your user. And that is the end of our video. Now as we said in the beginning of this video, these are all moments, right? But if you look deeper into what's really happening, you'll see that there's something that ties all of these moments together, and that is the idea of change. When a user performs a command or hovers over a button or clicks a target, these are all actions that are asking. The user is requesting from the interface things to change. Open a modal, send a form, drop a menu, check a box, navigate to a new page. These are all moments of change. And as we discussed in the first episode of this series, animation is all about the motion of changing from one state into another and helping the user to understand what just happened and what they should be doing now. Thank you so much for watching Dev Tips. I'm, I'm really excited to share this video with you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something or just got some new ideas for what you've been using in your next project. If this video was valuable to you, we also have a community of people like you, people who are, are learning and growing every day in web design and development. These people are the patrons of Dev Tips. Patrons of the channel choose an amount of their own and donate it to the work that I'm doing here and making these videos all free for you guys. If you're interested to learn more, go visit patreon.com slash devtips and you can learn about the extra perks for being a patron. Things like the Dev Tips chat, monthly live hangouts, um, we have a, even have a Patreon podcast. Anyway, check that out, it's at patreon.com slash devtips and I just want to thank you for watching this video with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep on hacking. Mm. Oh, just setting my password. Oh, just uh, setting my password. My name is Travis, and this is Dev Tips. Passwords are important.